Hello, Starbounders! Welcome back to the second installment of Arkin's Lab, where we'll continue teaching you how to become professional Starbound engineers. In the previous episode, we discussed the basics of wiring in the game. Wire items, wires, and input and output. If you're new to wiring in Starbound and haven't watched the aforementioned episode, I highly recommend you pause this video and double back to make sure we're on the same page. Just click the title on the screen to open it in a new tab. As the series progresses, I plan on establishing a sort of collective toolbox of definitions, skills, and useful tricks which we will later use to design highly complicated systems. With that in mind, in order to keep these episodes at a reasonable length, for all our sakes, I can't afford to keep backtracking. So, I'll rely extensively on your knowledge of previous topics when covering new ones. When we start working on these complex projects, I'll do my best to include links to all relevant prerequisite information, so that if you come across anything you're unfamiliar with, you'll know where to look. With that said, posting questions in the comment section is always a valid option. I'd be happy to help. Now. I'm sure you're as eager as I am to get to the main show, so today we're discussing logic gates. We'll talk about what logic gates are and what's so special about them, and we'll have an insight into different gates and how to use them. These gates include the NOT gate, the AND gate, the OR gate, and the XOR gate, or the XOR gate. Today's episode is relatively simple, but imperative to understanding the building blocks of all real wiring systems in Starbound. Without further ado, let's get to it. First, let's discuss what logic gates are in general. In the previous episode, we saw how to build a simple light switch. Now, we're going to revisit this idea with a small complication. Say we want our base to be powered by an external power source, like this generator. When the generator is on, there is a stable flow of electricity to the base, allowing lights to be turned on or off regularly. When the generator is off, however, we want the base to go dark, whether the light switches are on or not. In this example, the simple wiring lessons which we learned last time won't be enough, due to the default behavior of input nodes. As soon as any wire that connects to an input node is live, the node interprets the incoming input as on. As you can see, so long as either the generator or the switch are on, then the light remains on, which won't do for our plans. The solution to this problem lies with logic gates. Based on real-life counterparts, logic gates add an additional dimension to wiring in Starbound that the conventional methods can't match. They allow the engineer to aggregate input from several wiring items and define various conditions that apply accordingly to generate complex functions in the wiring systems. What makes these gates so special? Well, for one, unlike regular wiring items, logic gates can, and often do, have more than one input nodes. Furthermore, their reaction to incoming input is special and unique to each gate, and is calculated by a specific function according to a tally of all their input nodes. We will get to gate specifics in just a moment. Like every wire item in Starbound, gates also have two states, on and off, which they transmit via their output node. To help you distinguish between these states, every gate has a small screen that is dark when the gate is off and glows blue when it turns on. Unlike most wire items in the game, you cannot manually interact with these gates, as their state is entirely dependent on the combined states of their input nodes. As such, logic gates define an empty input node, as in one that has no wire connected to it, as off. That's just their default behavior to it. On a quick side note, logic gates are referred to as switches in-game. 
While this is a legitimate way to call them, it gets a little confusing since there are also regular switches in the game, that are dubbed similarly. As such, I'll continue referring to them as gates, to avoid confusion. Now, let's finally take a look at these logic gates and what they do, starting with the NOT gate. Also called the inverter, the NOT gate is the only gate of the four that has a single input node. Living up to its name, this gate state is always opposite to the incoming input. When the input is on, the gate is off. And when the input is off, the gate turns on. When no wire is connected to the gate, its default state is on, as expected. The NOT gate is probably the most commonly used of all logic gates in Starbound, due to its simplicity and crucial significance. In real-life computer science, it is essential in creating what's called complete systems. In order to explain how to use this gate, let's consider this example. If you've ever had the dubious pleasure of using the bathroom on an airplane, you've probably noticed that the lights only turn on once you've closed the door and locked it behind you. Let's try implementing just that. A bathroom that remains dark when the door is open and lights up as soon as the door is closed. For this example, we'll use a simple sliding door which will operate manually. We'll connect the door's output node to the NOT gate's input. Now, so long as the door is open, the NOT gate remains off, and it will only turn on once the door is closed shut. Next, we'll connect the gate's output node to the light bulb so that the two are correlated. And voila! We have ourselves a proper airline bathroom. Perfect for everyone's discomfort. Let's move on to the next logic gate on our list, the AND gate. The AND gate has two input nodes and implements logical conjunction meaning that this gate will only turn on when both its input nodes are on and will remain off when either one or both of its input nodes are off. It provides a great way to define certain restrictions on your wiring system due to its selective nature. Let's go back to the example we've discussed at the beginning of this episode. Say we want a light switch that only works so long as the generator powering our base is online. This is exactly where an AND gate comes in handy. If we connect the generator to one of the gate's input nodes and the switch to the other, then we guarantee that the gate will only turn on when both the generator and the light switch are on. If either one is off, then the gate will remain off too. That way, when we connect the gate to the light bulb, we get the desired result. So long as the generator is on, then the light switch solely governs the light state. If the generator is off, however, then the light will remain off no matter how many times we flick the switch. Next, let's talk about the OR gate. The OR gate has two input nodes and implements logical disjunction. This means that this gate will turn on if either one of its input nodes are on and will only turn off if both inputs are off. In theory, this gate is a great foil to the AND gate by allowing the user to ascertain when either part of the system is online. I say in theory since by default, all input nodes regard the input as on if even a single wire connected to them is live, which makes the OR gate somewhat redundant. It does, however, make for a useful buffer. Wires in Starbound have a length limit, yet oftentimes you want to wire your system wide apart, be it for security reasons or aesthetics. 
Since a single input is enough to turn the OR gate on, you can use it as a relay station for an exceptionally long wire by connecting it midway to one of the gate's nodes and continuing the wire from its output node. It also makes for a good way to funnel a large amount of input to a system. If, for example, you have a button that's supposed to connect to several components of a large system, then you risk having to make a lot of changes if you want to move that button around. If, however, you have an OR gate connected to all the aforementioned components, then you simply need to connect the button to the OR gate with a single wire to achieve the same result. We'll elaborate more on this when we discuss modularity in episode 6. A simple example of the OR gate would be a door which can be opened by pressing a button on either side of its threshold. By simply wiring each button to one of the gate's input nodes, we guarantee that the gate will turn on if either one of the buttons, or both, are pressed. By wiring the gate to the door itself, we achieve the desired effect. Note that, as stated before, we can simply connect both buttons to the door directly and get the same result without using the OR gate at all. Finally, let's talk about the XOR gate. Also called the exclusive OR, this gate has two input nodes and only turns on if these two inputs are different, meaning that one is on and the other is off. If both inputs are on, or both are off, then this gate remains off. This gate is great for measuring asymmetric situations in your system. For example, when you want to make sure two buttons were pressed at precisely the same time. For this example, let's design a simple bedroom with a single light bulb and two light switches. The idea is simple. We want to be able to switch the light on or off using either of the two switches. Notice that an OR gate won't do, since if I switch on either one of the light switches, then the other will no longer have any effect, and the same goes for an AND gate. To do this, we'll wire each switch to one of the XOR gate's inputs. That way, we guarantee that the gate will only turn on if the two switches are of a different state to each other. If I flick one switch to turn the gate on, then flicking the other will turn it off, and vice versa. By connecting the gate to the light itself, we accomplish what we came here to do. Now, I can turn the light on when I enter the room, and turn it off from my bed right before I hit the hay. Before we conclude this episode, let's take a moment to review what we've learned today. We've introduced logic gates and their principles, and we've discussed the different gates available in Starbound, those being the NOT gate, the AND gate, the OR gate, and the XOR gate. As with previous episodes, if you're not 100% certain about any of these topics, you're encouraged to click them on the screen now to return to the section in this video in which they were covered. In the next episode, we'll learn all about memory and how to design systems in Starbound that can store long-term information while running. Until then, I will leave you all, aspiring engineers, with a simple challenge to help you consolidate what we've learned. Your project's requirements are these. Design a protected door that can only be opened if the right combination of switches are pulled. As you can see in this example, if a wrong switch is pulled, or one of the right switches is excluded, then the door remains shut. This assignment is meant to help you exercise wiring logic gates to each other, 
and can be solved with the tools at your disposal. That being said, there is no obligation to do this. If you're familiar enough with wiring to find this too easy, or just can't spare the time, then you're more than welcome to skip this challenge altogether. This is merely to give some direction to those who want to practice at their spare time. In the beginning of the next episode, I'll walk you through the solution to this puzzle, but there will be an option to skip it for those who are uninterested. That's it for now. So, as always, if you have ideas for future episodes, a topic you want to make sure I'm going to cover, a wiring idea you'd like me to try and design, or just constructive criticism, which is probably the most important to me, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you found this video interesting and or helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to our channel for more awesome videos. Our community is open to everyone, so check us out today at www.outbreakgaming.co.uk for more information. Until next time, this is Arkin's Lab, signing off.